the High Line. This historic, elevated railway is now known as New York's Park in the Sky. It's a mile and a half of meandering pathways, lush plantings, and dramatic design cutting through the heart of the meatpacking district in West Chelsea. But the High Line was once a bustling railroad, part of the industrial fabric of Manhattan's west side. In the 1800s, railroad tracks ran down the west side waterfront, bringing goods to the factories and warehouses. The streets were crowded and the trains were dangerous. They caused so many accidents that 10th Avenue was nicknamed Death Avenue. The railroad hired men on horseback to ride in front of every train. Each waved a red flag to warn pedestrians out of the way. These men were called the West Side Cowboys. The High Line was built in the 1930s, part of a massive infrastructure project called the West Side Improvement. With its giant steel beams lifting freight trains 30 feet in the air, the High Line brought the New York Central Railroad right through the upper floors of factory and warehouse buildings. Trains in the High Line carried meat to the meatpacking district, baking supplies to the National Biscuit Company or Nabisco, now Chelsea Market, and many other goods to the West Side. But within just a few decades, more and more freight began to travel by trucks on the new interstate highway system. Rail traffic declined on the High Line, and part of it was torn down in the 1960s. The last train ran down the High Line before Thanksgiving in 1980, carrying three boxcars full of frozen turkeys. After the train stopped running, the High Line sat, unused, a rusty monument to the West Side's industrial past. On top of the tracks, nature began to take over. The wind blew seeds in from across the river, and birds dropped others onto the rail bed. Some of these seeds took root, grew, died, and decomposed. A layer of soil built up, and as the years passed, a strange, unlikely wilderness took hold. Grasses, wildflowers, and trees grew up, watered by the rain, sheltered by the buildings, and virtually untouched by humans. But on the ground, property owners in West Chelsea began to lobby the city to have the High Line torn down. They called it a blight and an eyesore. In 1999, two neighborhood residents, Robert Hammond and Joshua David, met at a community meeting about the future of the High Line. They heard that the structure might be torn down and wanted to see if anyone was trying to save it. Nobody was, so they started Friends of the High Line, a nonprofit group. At first, saving the High Line was an unlikely dream. Mayor Giuliani signed demolition orders, and few people thought the High Line could be preserved. But over the next few years, Friends of the High Line brought together a community of artists, architects, business owners, and civic leaders to rally for the High Line. The city government got behind the project in 2002. Three years later, the project was approved. After an international competition, a design team led by field operations with Giller, Scafidio, and Renfro began to plan the High Line's transformation to a public park. For more information about the High Line or to become a member of Friends of the High Line, please visit thehighline.org.